leave the driver to me. All right. Tony. Yep. Where's the driver? Round the other side. What's his name? Jim Wordley. They cleared out most of the lorry, left two pallets. Pros, in other words. Mr. Wordley. The I Burnside. How many cases of tobacco were you carrying? 18 pallets. 60 cases a pallet. Worth how much? I wouldn't know. We don't do profit share. Sure. You must be pretty shaken up. Not oh, for crying out loud. Just give us a few minutes, will you? And we'll have a talk. The information room took a 999 call. He said someone was trapped in the warehouse. The caller didn't leave a name. Then we found this brute of a thing. Where was the driver? Back of the lorry. Hank up to a rail. Did you get much sense out of him? Or is he always a stroppy little scrub? Hello, Harry. What is this crap? Well, why don't you give me a bell? I met you somewhere. Mr Hayes, I have a warrant to search these premises. <laughs> Leave it out. Come on, Harry, out of the way, we're coming in. Don't you get in your own back, are ya? No, not really. Excuse me? Just a routine raid. I'll see you back at the station. Yeah, right. Let's use that office. Oh, Rich, quick. No one's looking now. Mr. those boxes in the back of the motor. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Tony. Hey, you cause any damage, Michael, and I'll take civil action. Ed? Yeah? Well done. We'll take That's that. for my private use, that is. Check it against the list. Yeah, where did you buy it from? Silly, Harry. Very silly. Anything else on that subject? No, sir. Right, well, let's move on, then, shall we, Kim? Um, DC Mark Teller has set up an operation against a suspected handler. That's going down later today. Also, Frank Burnside is investigating... <coughs> Can hijack. I make a small query? Yes. This handler you're spinning. It's Harry Hayes. He, he's uh, got previous for similar offences. Thanks, Frank. Right. His name rings a bell. Well, he was involved in a corruption allegation against DC uh, Dashwood. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sorry, I just wondering. I mean, those allegations were unfounded. I am right about that. Yes, Hayes withdrew his statement. Oh, it must have rankled, though. I mean, Mike Dashwood was fairly cut up about it. MS-15 put him through the ringer. Yeah, well, it's no big deal. I mean, malicious complaints are an occupational hazard. We all get them. Oh, I've never had one. Yes, well, thank you, Andrew. It was resolved. Hmm? Yes, sir. Seems a bit of a coincidence, though, doesn't it? What? He's an active villain. Look, Hayes makes a malicious complaint, and all of a sudden he's the subject of a major CID operation. As I said, Hayes is an active villain. Well, why hasn't he been raided before? Well, was he off limits as a CID informant? No one is off limits. We're simply acting on information received. DC Martella is in charge of the investigation. Mike Dashwood is just helping out. Point taken, Kim. Revenge is sweet, right? Not really. No. Call me Frank. Frank? No, I prefer Copper. He's up, Mr Wordley. This is not the third degree. I just want to get at the facts. Go ahead, then. All right, I will. Copper. Tell me what happened. Run me through it. I pulled off the M25 onto a slip road. A Copper flagged me down. Well, I thought it would a Copper. What was he wearing? Flat cap. Soft sort, you know, not a helmet. The high visibility jacket. I saw the sign by the side of the road first. Department of Transport spot check. So I stopped. Is that common? Spot checks on lorries? Oh, yeah. Can't even go for a pee without someone following us with a bottle. And then? There was another guy there. I took him for the DOT official. The copper showed me his warrant card. I couldn't see it from the cab, so I opened the door. And? Well, what do you think? All hell broke loose. Someone grabbed the door, the far window went in, it must have been a sledgehammer, and then the scumbag in the yellow jacket pulled out a sawn off and pointed it at me. I thought he'd fired it. 
I thought the breaking glass, the, the windscreen going in, were me being shot. But no shots were fired. And I'm not dead. Yeah, that's right. Mine's without sugar. Uh, Tosh, I need to speak with you about those case papers. Mum. What? Mum, I just wondered if, uh, if Mr Burnside needed some backup. Oh, let's drop everything and do the glamour job. Good idea. My office top. Did you get a good look at him? The one with the gun? Don't let me laugh. It was pouring with rain and I was soiling myself. John, give me five minutes. Would you recognise him? That's what I'm saying. No, I wouldn't. What about the others? No, I didn't see a thing. They bundled into the cab, pulled a bag over my head, and then one of them started up the lorry. You heard him speak? No, none of them spoke. How did you come to find me, anyway? Did you hear anything when they were unloading the lorry? No. You sure? Why did you stop? How do you mean? When the copper flagged you down. Why did you stop? It's the law. I have to stop. Didn't have to open the cab door, though. Yes, I did. I couldn't see the warrant card. What about the vulnerable load card? I'm not with you. The card that says, I'm not allowed to leave this vehicle, please take me to the nearest police station. Our company doesn't issue them. It's not policy. I see. That it, then? No. Let's go through it again in a bit more detail. I've already told you all I know. All the same. Look, I'm dead beat. Let's go through it some other time, all right? Now would be better. Not for me, it wouldn't. I'm free to go, aren't I? Free to go? Of course. Right. I'm off, then. Jim, give Alistair a call. Turn to Bowler Haulage Company and tell them their driver's not cooperating fully with our inquiries. All right. You still here? All right, and here. And these are the items you can keep with you in the cell. Neanderthal. Oh, yeah. Used to get a better class of villain. You're going to tap me up, darling? You should be so lucky. You buy me some breakfast, then? Eh? Yeah, why not? The total value of the load was 360. Now, excluding the two pallets they ditched, that comes to about 310, 320 in stolen tobacco. So we're talking about a 300 grand haul. Well, my chap at the haulage company tells me they'll get about 150, 200 grand cash for that. Not bad for a day's work. Mm. What about a driver? Clean bill of health. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the third time Wordley's been hijacked. Last time he was jumped with two men with clubs. He put up a fight and made dog meat of him. Broke his, uh, his jaw, two fingers, some ribs. I hear I know less. I've spoken to the Southern Security Manager. They're 100% behind Wardley. There's not many drivers that take a risk like that. Yeah, that's what don't figure to me. I mean, Wardley's no fool. Right. I am going to make some calls. You go and take Wardley through his story. Again? What do you mean, again? Well, you, you spent over an hour with him. You must have covered the ground by now. You're telling me. I'm sick of asking him the same questions. So? So I want you to go in and ask him the same questions. All right. No, it's not all right. Wordley's under stress. He's suffered a major trauma. Oh, gosh. Trauma? I thought he was just full of crap. Well, no, actually. He's a victim, not a suspect, Gov. He's been held at gunpoint, put in cuffs, humiliated. And 18 months ago, he was beaten to within an inch of his life. Yeah, yeah, I know all that. But you're still planning to put him through the ringer? Stay in a practice, pal. Squeeze him till the pips pop out. Well, I don't approve. You what? I said I don't approve. This is police bullying of the worst kind. I haven't laid a finger on him. Yeah, well, you don't have to, do you? That's what makes you such a good bully. Now, you listen to me, Sergeant Gregg. Just do as you're told. 
All right. You took me fags. Can I have a smoke? There's no smoking in the cells. Please. All right, you can smoke in the corridor. I'll get them. Could you? Can't breathe to the matter, fag. What were the positions? The bogus copper here. The other one here. I overshot a bit. They had to trot back to me. Then the fake policeman pulled a warrant card. Hmm? What did the other man do? He moved. I don't know what he did. Later on, he was in front of the cab facing me. He must have moved round in front of the cab. He must have... Tell me what the police officer said. Yeah. The exact words. Nah. No. Nah, no, I'm tucked up here. Why don't you sit down? There's no hurry. So, what you got on old Harry so far? Oh, five grand's worth of stuff in his house. More in his locker. Should go down for a nice one. Four previous. So, what's the next step? Well, what do you mean? Well, he's hardly worth going all the way for, is he? I mean, he's only a small-time villain. I mean, you've tugged him, but uh, let's not get carried away. I'm not with you. I mean, turn him. Use him. Don't they teach you that at college anymore? Sorry, Gov. I think you're a bit behind the times. No, I'm not. He used to be your informant. He can be again. What's the problem? The problem is that I nearly lost my job over that slag. I could have been done for extortion. Ah, but you weren't, were you? Near enough. It's not an experience I care to repeat. Pity. I thought you had more bottle. It's got nothing to do with bottle. Don't be so obvious. You're taking it personal. Now, you should never take it personal. Of course I'm taking it personal. Harry Hayes, you must be joking. Look, what is the point of sending him down by three or four when you can use him to get to the big boys? I'm not interested in the big boys. It's Hayes I'm after. What? Now, don't you dare use the job to settle scores. I'm warning you, Michael, I could get you in a serious stuck with the DCI over this. Do it. Say what you like. Look, I am not having a go at you. All I'm saying is, if you see an advantage, take it. I mean, you could do with a good result. Something to boost your career. I don't see it quite like that. Michael, I want Hayes. I want you to give him to me. He said, spot check, mate. I sort of half lived red, half heard it. Then appeared at the warrant. He crooked his finger. Which he... finger? How do I know? He flagged me down. I opened the door. The glass crashed in. The gun was pointing at me. I could see right down the barrel. I swear I could see the bullets. But the face. Did you see the face of the man holding no, the gun? No, no. I told you all I know. Yeah, all right. Mom? Yes? I've just had a conversation with Mr Burnside about Harry Hayes. You may not like this. Try me. The DI wants me to turn Harry, use him as an informant again. What's Mr Burnside's interest in Hayes? I thought he'd have had enough to do. There's a possibility that Harry's got information on that hijacking job. That's the DI's theory, anyway. Based on what? Based on files he pulled from the Force Intelligence Bureau. Harry's listed as an associate of a suspected hijacker. Steve Carey. Well, Frank must have the magic touch. I've never been able to get anything out of the FIB quite so quickly. <laughs> These are files he pulled some time back. Homework, he says. All right, so Hayes is the associate of a suspected villain. What does that prove? That he moves in the right circles. The last time Harry snouted for me was on a case similar to this one. We landed a team of hijackers. Maybe he can do it again. All right, let's find out. Anything for me, John? You're in a hurry. I'm always in a hurry. What you got? Glove print, that any good to you? Could be, if they kept the glove. Driver had his seat pushed back. That makes him tall. And we should get some fibres from his clothing off the seat. These were pros, Gov. They'll make a bonfire of their gear. Maybe. Maybe not. Right. Cheers, John. See you later. Alistair seems put out. 
He reckons I'm leaning too hard on the driver. It's not like you, Gov. Ah, oh, Jill. Now, less of that. You work it out, Jim. Why do you reckon Wordly is being so stroppy with me? I mean, he knows he could lose his job if he don't cooperate with us. That makes sense. Maybe you don't like coppers. Yeah, or maybe he's got a guilty conscience. You take that other hijacking. Wordly's no fighter. What's he want to lay his neck on the line for? That's his job. Protect the company property. Ah, oh, don't give me any of that loyalty, Paul. It's ain't the Middle Ages. But well, what are you planning to do? But Alistair reckons Wordley's almost ready to walk. Or well, book him in. Arrest him? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, he's up in front of the magistrate tomorrow morning. Right. Thanks, Jay. Harry, how are we treating you? What do you want? Just a chat. This is Detective Chief Inspector Reed. I've got nothing to say to you, not without me brief. Very well. I'll make the arrangements. Wait. What did you want to talk about? Well, not about the case against you. That's a matter for WDC Martella. So? I'm looking for information. I ain't doing no deals. We're not offering you a deal. No inducements, no promises. You shove off, then. However, if you are able to help, it may be taken into account. Not interested. We depend on information. The courts understand that. Get lost. I don't want to know. Think about it, Harry. What am I looking at? Hard to say. Do you reckon three to four years is a likely sentence, Mike? I wouldn't like to say, Mum. It all depends on the judge. <laughs> three to four? There is a procedure we follow in certain cases if we get information that could be of use to us. I got one good punch in, then somebody jumped me from behind. The piled in, kicking and punching. I will look at a survive. Can you tell me why you decided to make a fight of it? How do you mean? What sort of stupid questions that? All I'm saying is I wouldn't have taken a risk like that. No, you wouldn't, would you? Look, I've got nothing to do with him. Don't try and rope me in. He's an associate of yours. We have surveillance reports. <laughs> Don't do this to me, Michael. I'm looking for information. That's all, nothing more. Look, I've got nothing to do with Steve Carey. We just went to school together, that's all. We go out on the hit and miss now and then. <laughs> that's it, I swear. I reckon Steve Carey was responsible for the hijacking this morning. What do you reckon? <laughs> Carey's a nutter. I want to see him slash a man's face just for looking at him. So what do you reckon? Was it Carey? <laughs> Who else? Who does Carey work with? <laughs> you get nothing more from me. Who else does no way, Carey... Mike. We can't expect Harry to tell us that. What we want to know is where's the gear going? How would they shift all that gear? I mean, is there a wholesaler, a, a shopkeeper? It's a full load of tobacco. It's got to be shifted fast. How's that going to be done? I'm saying nothing. I'm saying nothing! You've said enough already, Harry. Do you know where the tobacco is going? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's in the bag. Hayes, what's he given you? He's given up his pal Steve Carey, and he's also given us the address of the wholesaler who's shifting the gear. You kidding? Who? One Ahmed Singh runs a chain of shops and a wholesale warehouse. He has contracts with all the big tobacco companies, but he's not above shifting some of the bent gear. How does Hayes know all this? He's in on it, that's how. It's my guess that Harry's been handler on most of Steve Carey's jobs. They met at school, started working together. Then when Carey moves up a league, Harry carries on shifting stuff for him. Tobacco, electricals, you name it. Meanwhile, he runs a, a little sideline snouting for us. It earns him a bit of money and he gets to take out some of Carey's rivals. But now it's his friends he's giving up. It gets to be a habit, grassing. Sierra Oscar from Sierra Oscar 7. I'm outside Singh's Wholesale Warehouse in Westmore Street. Can you run a check on the premises, see if we've got any information on the owners? 
I was spoken to Mr. Conway. He'll be at the briefing. Excellent. About the driver. Good thinking, Alistair. Almost slipped my mind. Yeah, we better get him shifted out, eh? I'll go and handle it. No. No, stick him back in the interview room. We'll have another go. You're joking. No, I'm serious. Carver's setting up the observation post. The briefing's not till five. We've got some time. Mrs Patel? Yes? I'm from Sunhill Police Station. We're on an operation. We need somewhere to watch from. Well, let me put it this way. If you're in the clear, fine. If you're bent, I'd get in with your story first. That's my advice. All right. Tell me. I have nothing to do with the hijacking. I'm not taking money. I didn't know it would happen. But? The last job, when I got done over, I was in on that. What? How can that be? They beat the living daylights out here. Yeah, well, what they said was, after they tied me up, they said, we'll have to give you a clout to make it look real. I said, all right. Not much I could do. And then that piece of dreck really started laying into me. I thought I wasn't going to make it. When he'd finished, he said, don't forget to keep your mouth shut. Was I going to turn him over? But he said that. Don't forget to keep your mouth shut. Did you get paid afterwards? Oh, yeah. I got paid all right. And I kept my mouth shut. Why are you telling us now? Well, it's the same one, isn't it? The one who gave me a hiding. He's the one who had the sewn off. When I saw his face, I thought he was going to let me have it with both barrels. He's psycho. What's his name? Carey. Steve Carey. I'm going to join the DCI. You can take it from there. What's going to happen to me now? Give us everything you've got on Carey. It'll help you in the long run.